Right, this is going to be a somewhat long video, but essentially I want to get into about how Pokemon fans are the most retarded of all gamers. I mean, they're basically an off branch of JRPG, so that explains why, but I've composed a list of things that uh, just make po Pokemon impossible to play, or at least enjoy playing. And I don't understand why as a child I was able to put up with this shit, but uh, as an adult, I know better. Okay, so I'm just going to get into the list. Pokeballs don't get much better. And this is true. If you knew the actual coding language of the Pokemon game, a Pokeball is only like a few decimals short of a Great Ball and an Ultra Ball, etc. Unless you have a Master Ball, there is no mathematical evidence that you will absolutely catch a Pokemon. Doesn't matter how much you damage it, doesn't matter how much you make it go to sleep. In fact, all of those things only minimally affect the capture rate. So it's always a toss of the coin. I, I shouldn't even say toss of the coin because that implies an equal amount of chance. Uh, Game Freak's logic of AI is always right doesn't give you equal chance. If there's ever the probability of otherwise, it will break it. So, rock, paper, scissors. No, no. See, Pokemon tries to have this idea that it has elemental balance to it. That water is weak to grass type, grass is weak to fire type, fire type is weak to water. But then there's a multitude of other elements involved. Now, mind you, if you had looked up rock, paper, scissors, there are actually multiple games that transcend the three. There is uh, Rock, Paper, Scissor 27, Rock, Paper, Scissor uh, 30 something. It can go pretty high, just like Pokemon. So there's no reason for Pokemon to have these grotesque imbalances, like Steel type. What isn't Steel defensive against? It just, every, pretty much if it can damage you, it won't damage Steel. And in the old days, Ghost and Psychic type were overpowered. Nowadays, they've been nerfed to all hell. But the but the fact is, the the fact remains the same that it will always be something. There will always be one element type that they pick favorites with. Not to mention, when you statistically look at the number of Pokemon of a certain element, there is balance in there too. Why is there only like five Ice types, but then like? 50 electric types. How can you claim there's some kind of rock, paper, scissor element when in practice you're never going to have an ice type on the field, but you're probably going to have an electric type? So, starter with tackle is hard mode, regardless of what element they are. It's true, tackle sucks. There are some Pokemon that actually get a decent attack called Scratch, which actually does damage. Tackle doesn't do any damage. Now the theory here is that the uh, Pokemon that gets Tackle is probably a defensive type. Like if you chose Squirtle, you probably got Tackle because he has a higher defense, which is a load of jacking off, because defense doesn't mean anything. As I said, Game Freak will always absolutely side with the AI, so it's not like those attacks are going to miss nearly as often as they mathematically should. If you have a defense rate... Uh, let me break down the math to you, supposedly. The math is, let's say you have a defense of 50, and your opponent's Pokemon has a defense of 25. Well, they reduce their, your, their attack reduced by your defense means that you have a 25% chance of attacks missing you, right? Does it ever plan out that way? No. In fact, it just seems like they ignore all of that, and just there's this flat 5% chance that an attack will miss. That's the way it just seems to be from my practice. So, what's the point of having all this math? Clearly it's not being used. Or if it is, it's in some arcane form that nobody can actually see in-game. So, what's, what's the point? What's the point of having all these stats and shit? It's a ruse. Uh, let's see. Japanese people aren't good at math after all. Not only from the stats and things, but from experience points too. Uh, you know, like, let's say I get into a random encounter, and I, you know, faint that Pokemon, and I get 16 experience points for it, which is pretty bad in and of itself, because eventually 16 points ain't gonna do shit, no matter how low level I am. I could be, like, level 5, and it'd still be tedious. So, 16 experience points. But then, if I switch out my Pokemon for another Pokemon to battle it, suddenly both Pokemon get 
12 experience points. You seriously could not divide 16 by 2, and now all of a sudden it's a subtotal of 24 points? Really? So, you know, they should scratch out the entire XP system and just make a dividend of what the level is between you all. Like, let's say my Pokemon was level 17. He would need 17 points to ascend to the next level. And I'm fighting a random encounter that's like a level 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. That would mean 6 battles. So it would take him at least 6 battles to transcend into the next level and so on and so forth. This would create a much um, much lower gap between leveling because once he reaches level 18 it would still take the same amount of level 3 Pokemon random encounters to get him to go up. Thus it would not have to worry so much about going to Mount Moon and stepping all over Zubat because mathematically I'll still come out ahead uh, as opposed to just wasting my time. Uh, no diversity in what you can catch. Besides claiming to be mathematically sound, the game also claims that you get to catch them all, and no, that's not the case. Now mind you, I know that Game Freak was just out to make their money. They have to release two versions of a game and make them slightly different so that people buy both or have a friend buy one and they buy the other and blah blah blah. I understand that. What I don't understand is how is it that you can have like almost a thousand different type of Pokemon by Generation 5 and you're still using the same strategy. Strategy. You're still coming across the same two fucking Pokemon per area. That makes no sense. You have all this diversity and yet you're not using it. And then those stupid assholes that mod the game to be able to include all the Pokemon ruin it by upping the level of trainers and things because somehow the diversity of being able to catch more Pokemon is worth having to fight them at like double their level. No. No, if Pokemon were balanced in the first place, that wouldn't be an issue. But there's nothing balanced about this game. That's the problem. And the fans have their dicks of Game Freak 2 inside their throat to talk about it. Uh, level grinding. I, I don't even know any go any further than level grinding. That applies to all JRPGs to some extent, but with Pokemon even more so. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And some of the modded games want you to level grind even more. I have nothing else to say here other than do JRPG fans have a life? I mean, really, if you have a life, why are you not more aggravated with the fact that they expect you to expend two hours of your time every time you pop in a game just to fucking level up your guy before you can actually do anything? You're not really playing a game. You're just ritualistically button mashing until eventually you reach a high enough level to encounter the next boss or the next, you know, area with the next trainers, etc., like that. And it's just, it's a waste of anybody's time. And I cannot believe that you're so willing to give your money to a company that thinks that is innovative gaming. But when it was innovative gaming like 20 years ago, now it's just repetitive puke, and you're still doing it. Uh, no consent to battling trainers. Does that even need to be said? Does it need to be said that in a game where it's very, uh, you know, cutthroat and there's random encounters all over the place and everything like that, everything is very level dependent that uh, trainers should be able to at least ask before they come and fight you? If they so much as see you, bam, a battle is turned out. How, how does that make any sense? Uh, that's not really, uh, you know, sparring. That's not a sport. That's just thuggery. Why can't they just write it down as thuggery? Why cannot they just say that it's some kind of grim dark world where you have to battle Pokemon so that they can get your money because they live in a capitalist dystopia? You know? I know it's meant to be a children's game, but still, if people are just going to come up to you and start a fight with you, I don't think you got much to worry about giving kids the wrong message. Clearly, you're already giving them the wrong message. And it just, it annoys the hell out of me. It's not that most of the time you can't fight these trainers. I mean, you're usually at a high enough level anyway. It's just the point of why. Why incorporate that into the game where you could be busy trying to do your own thing, or maybe you just had a really strenuous battle as it was, and haven't had the time to go to a Pokemon Center, or don't have potions on hand or something, and then this other motherfucker comes along. You know, everyone talked about Gary Oak. Every single trainer was Gary Oak, to some extent. Uh, then Nurse Joy doesn't know how to shut the hell up. This one bothers me the most. 
Because when I go into a Pokemon Center, I don't want to hear a fucking conversation. I just want my Pokemon to be healed, and that's it. Unless Nurse Joy plans to lift up her nurse skirt and let me fuck her in the ass, I don't want to hear about her bullshit. Leave the chatty Cathy shit for somebody else. You know what the worst part about this is? If you were to go to your mother's house in the game and uh, sleep in because she goes, you look tired, why not take a nap? That actually takes less time than Nurse Joy's yapper. Which means that sleeping and then waking up and staying at home with mom takes less time than just going to the local Pokemon hospital and just healing your Pokemon flat out and then leaving. Why? Because Nurse Joy just doesn't shut the fuck up. Ever. And you have to deal with that conversation every single time. Doesn't matter how much button mashing you push. Doesn't matter how much uh, quick conversation uh, language you put it under. You could put it under fast wording and it would still take forever. And the worst part is, if you press the B button at the wrong time, she'll want to start talking again. Jesus Christ, I don't even talk to my own girlfriend this much. Just fucking shut up, heal my Pokemon, and I can get on with my life. You can do what you love doing of healing the Pokemon. I can do what I like doing of wounding the Pokemon. It works out for everybody. What what were they fucking thinking in their heads when they were like, Oh, let's make an NPC that they gotta meet every single five minutes anyway, and just make them just talk on and on and on and on. In fact, why are there even NPCs in the game? They're just standing around doing nothing. Half of them aren't up for trading a Pokemon. Half of them aren't up for giving you an item. They're just wasting space. I could understand if there was actual substance where talking to people gave you tips, actual good tips, not shit you already knew, or if like um, they gave you free items, or if they wanted to trade with you, or maybe if you completed a side quest then they give you an item or Pokemon or something, that would be understandable. But no, they just stand there to say the stupidest shit and then just say it over again if you click them again. They, they have absolutely no reason to exist in the game, and yet they do. And this is considered a master craft of gaming. This is considered one of the best games of all time, and to this day, still makes a decent amount of money. What, what is wrong with you people? Then I wonder how Steam and Xbox Live and Sony Live and stuff continue to live on, and it's through you motherfuckers. You're stupid as all hell. You're fucking dumb, and you will give your money to anything. Besides, of course, something that might actually deserve it, something that might actually deserve your time and effort, such as your freedom, or, you know, your livelihood, or something like that. No, you don't have time for that. But you have time to give your money to stupid bullshit created by the most dregs of the earth. And then you don't want me to call you evil. What better word would you have for that? How would you define someone that exists solely to make uh, the world worse than it was yesterday? I believe that is the very definition of evil. You are evil. Game Freak is evil. Uh, Valve is evil. Microsoft is evil. You're all fucking evil and you're all inhaling each other's testicles down each other's throats. Just gulping it in. Gulping it in the bullshit. Gulping in all the stupid crap. Gulping in the propaganda. Gulping in the, the greed and the selfishness and the fucking draining of your own labor for nothing. And that's evil. So... I just figured I'd make a video about how terrible Pokemon is, right down to the letter, what makes it terrible. Maybe some people out there will be like, hmm, that's a good point. There is no, absolutely no redeeming quality about Pokemon. Any sort of good quality it has is completely uh, raped, it just completely sodomized by the mechanics of it. So, I guess that's it.